exactly hurting for first-person shooters, so each release has to do something special to stand out from the pack. Whether it's a new spin on the setting, mission structure, or multiplayer modes, a shooter must ultimately provide a fresh experience that wants a shot in a competitive market. Frontline's Fuel of War hopes to scratch itchy trigger fingers with large maps, team-specific roles, and online support for up to 50 players. Does it offer some explosive action, or is it simply a bomb? The setting is 2024, and the world as we know it has changed. Years of Paris Hilton, Britney Spears, and Hannah Montana has plunged the planet into utter despair and chaos. There's also an oil shortage thing, which may have caused a few problems along the way. Overcrowding, famine, and disease have consolidated the nations into two rival superpowers, the Western Coalition and the Red Star Alliance. Both sides are fighting over the precious commodity known in some circles as black gold or Texas tea. Apparently, biodiesel didn't quite catch on as well as hoped. In the game's single-player campaign, you'll play as a Western Coalition fighting force known as the Stray Dogs. Their mission is to claim contested territory and hotspots across the globe. An embedded reporter will help document the war effort, but it's up to you to ensure the Stray Dogs' bite is as strong as their bark. It's the same old resources are drying up so the world is at war plot we've seen before, and there aren't many new twists on the formula in front lines. This World War III, Princeton? While the story is set in the future, don't expect to see laser guns, toothy aliens, or plasma swords. Frontlines is essentially a modern combat game with reimagined maps of real-world locales. In both the single-player campaign and online component, the goal is to advance each map's frontline, a dividing point between enemy and friendly territory. Advancing the front line is accomplished by completing objectives, which can be tackled in any order. Yet instead of focusing on one main task, you're typically presented with several at once. In the single-player campaign, this generally involves securing buildings, pieces of intelligence, or weapon caches. Online goals generally consist of defending areas and capturing key checkpoints on a choice of eight maps. Fortunately, you'll know precisely where each goal is located on the map. Each target is conveniently highlighted with a color-coded icon on your heads-up display, listing its approximate distance and location. Once you've decided on the task, you simply point your weapon's reticule in the right direction and keep pressing onward, battling groups of enemy soldiers along the way. In addition to on-foot combat, Frontlines lets you drive or pilot ground vehicles, helicopters, and jets from your choice of the first or third-person viewpoint. Not all vehicles are supported on all maps, however, and their controls take some time to get used to. In fact, most of the campaign is designed specifically to introduce you to the vehicles, weapons, and play mechanics, so you'll be better prepared for online play. Clocking in at six hours, the seven-level single-player component is over far too quickly. It's either Washington or Moscow. What makes Frontlines fun to play is an online component that offers diversity in weapons and roles. On-screen soldiers can choose from six weapon loadouts, Assault, Heavy Assault, Sniper, Anti-Vehicle, Special Operations, and Close Combat. Each group features a distinct primary weapon, pistol, and type of explosives. Characters are further defined by one of four roles, ranging from ground support and EMP tech to drone tech and air support. A drone tech, for example, can guide a remote-controlled helicopter to scout out enemy locations or even take out a soldier or two while self-destructing. Ground support repairs damaged vehicles while air support calls in aerial strikes to take out specific targets. EMP techs are invisible on radar and can spot rival drones and their operators. Each role also features a three-level ranking system, granting you cool new abilities such as deploying portable sentry guns or EMP generators to incapacitate nearby vehicles and drones. Ranks are achieved by earning experience on the battlefield. This includes killing enemies, securing checkpoints, or using role-specific abilities. While Frontlines offers an intriguing amount of strategic possibilities and a surprising amount of depth, there is only one multiplayer mode, the team-based tug-of-war battle between the two factions. Another issue is the limited voice options. You can only talk to members of a four-man squad. Of course, that means you're free from hearing prepubescent boys screaming, but it would have been nice to have at least a few options. The limited number of dedicated servers is frustrating, and lag can be a big problem as well. We can take it, and we can dish it up! That's what I want to hear!
While the world in Frontlines is not as detailed as the environments found in Call of Duty 4, Gears of War, and Bioshock, it is more ambitious from a content standpoint. Vehicles, remote-controlled drones, aircraft, ground troops, and explosions help contribute to a visceral, exciting presentation.